Hello, let's talk about restoration of class 5 lesions at the, on the gingival facial. First of all, what causes that? Why do people get these areas on their teeth? The common thought today is it's from clenching, not so much grinding, but clenching. And these people will also have exostoses very often, bony growths on the facial side of the alveolar process are from clenching. Tori, on the other hand, just come from who knows where. Those are on the tongue side or the, the center of the palate. So if somebody's a big clencher, they're going to have abfracted areas. Now, why does, that, why does that occur? Well, it's like breaking a, a bobby pin or a paper clip. The root is securely held by the bone, and so when the person clenches their teeth, this is the flex point and they flex the enamel off the side of their tooth at that point. So you can do, you can place a beautiful composite, but if the person doesn't have a night guard or if they clench their teeth during the day with the night guard not in place, this is going to flex off. It's very interesting, I've had veneers flex and this part of the veneer flex off the tooth in these patients that clench. And so that's why most of my practice has a night guard or a dental sleep apnea snoring device so they can't put their teeth together and clench or grind. So you can see the before and the after. Now, the thing to know about these bonded composites almost anywhere in the mouth is over time they're going to have to be replaced. One of the issues with a bonded composite is coefficient of thermal expansion. The coefficient of thermal expansion of a composite is about 70-75. That's how much it expands and contracts when exposed to hot and cold. The coefficient of thermal expansion of a tooth is around 11. So when the patient drinks hot and cold, especially cold, that composite's going like this and the tooth is going like this. So over time, most composites are going to pull away from the tooth and you'll get a dark line around them. That's especially true if they drink a lot of coffee or red wine. Anything that stains white carpet will also stain teeth and uh, composites. So you, just, you tell the patient when you place these, it's not going to last forever. Periodically, you're going to have to replace them probably. So the first thing I'm going to do in these cases is remove the sclerotic or secondary dentin in that abfracted area. And I'm not removing very much, I'm just freshening the surface. It's like trying to glue two boards together. If they're dirty or it's not a fresh surface, they're not gonna stick real well. So I wanna just freshen that. So I've applied, uh, given local anesthesia, and I'm just gonna freshen this with a coarse barrel diamond. Not much, just a little bit just to get rid of that sclerotic dentin. Then I'm gonna etch with 38% phosphoric acid. Now remember, if it's dentin, you only etch for about 15 seconds. If it's enamel, then you can etch for a minute or really as long as you want. So if there's dentin and enamel, place it on the enamel first and then the dentin. In this case, I'm just etching for about 15 seconds because the only, only enamel is on the margin. Then I'm going to apply the primer adhesive, and you'd want the tooth to be damp. What I normally do is after I've rinsed off the edge with the water, I'll take a two by two and just dab it. So it's still moist, but it's not desiccated. Then it's very important that you blow off the primer adhesive into a two by two. And I put the two by two right on top of the tooth and the primer adhesive and blow it so it goes into the two by two and doesn't go all over the mouth, all over the gum tissue, all over the adjacent teeth. You want to blow this off until nothing wiggles. That's very important because there's acetone or alcohol carrier in the primer. If you don't blow it off, you've got that acetone alcohol carrier in the primer adhesive and it can diminish the bond strength. So blow that off until nothing wiggles and then cure the primer adhesive before you place the filled resin or the composite. Now this is different with a direct composite than it is with a veneer. With a veneer, you blow the primer adhesive off the tooth, 
and then you place the veneer with the filled resin in the veneer. You don't cure anything, as you'll see in my veneer videos, until the veneer is seated. Then you cure the primer adhesive, the filled resin, all together. But in this case, with direct composite, you always cure the primer adhesive in any situation before you place the filled resin or the, the composite and you only have to cure it for about five seconds. Now this is flowable. <clears throat> in abfracted areas, I really like flowable because it, it flows into the space very nicely and adapts very well. And what about picking shade? Well, I want the shade to be just a tiny bit on the lighter side of the tooth. You know, match it basically, but if it's a little bit lighter, everybody likes a lighter tooth, a lighter shade. So I want to match that shade and I don't mind if it's a little lighter. Now when you're applying the flowable composite, be sure you leave the tip of the syringe in the material. If you take it out, put it in and out, you're going to incorporate air bubbles. So be sure you leave the tip in the material. Now I've flowed some on just as a base and then I'm coming back and applying a second coat on top of that. And so the first coat I'm probably only going to cure for about 10 seconds. It's amazing how fast these curing lights work. Now see I'm keeping the tip in there and then I'm, this is a fantastic instrument, I'm just blending it in with the margins both with the tip of the syringe and with the spatula. Main thing is you don't want any air bubbles or any voids. Then once I've, once I've placed it, I'm going to cure it for 40 seconds with this particular Dimitron curing light. And I love the Dimitron curing light. I've had Dimitron for 40 years and they work like a dream. I know some of you like the laser light that cures it very quickly, like just a few seconds. There have been some questions about particles of the composite aligning correctly if it cures that quickly. And so I'm not, I've got 40 seconds. It doesn't, I'm not in a high volume practice. So taking 40 seconds to cure is not a big deal for me. But I'm not an expert on curing lights. I just, I'm just telling you what has worked for 40 years and that Dimitron light has worked for me for 40 years. And so I continue to use it. Now, I'm going to polish this first with a, a flame-shaped fine diamond. Very light touch, lots of water, and just contour it. Then I'm going to come back with a Brazzler 12 fluted carbide finishing bar. Again, light, light pressure, and I don't want to dig into the composite. I want to, I want to go in the direction that the burr is polishing, not cutting. So very light pressure and go in the one direction the burr polishes and one direction it cuts and digs. And so don't go in the digging direction, go in the polishing direction. And I'm checking the margins. And this is a Shofu Soft Lux polishing disc. And I like to squirt water on it when I'm using it. And I want that disc to polish in the from the composite to the tooth in just a light touch and it does a beautiful job. There's two different uh, coarsenesses and I use the medium and the fine and you want it to roll in the direction of from the composite to the tooth. So there's the final result. So that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Click on the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasteredClasses.com if you want the full Monty, the really good stuff. In DentistryMasteredClasses.com there's an organized library of all the dental minute videos plus many complete comprehensive cases not seen in dental minute that are fantastic. Plus there's a uh, a section of very pertinent articles that all of us need to read. So subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com.